Michael Steele, I have to start with you because you know all those cats that I just played on that reel spreading their disinformation. The thing that strikes me is one, they knew at the time that what they were saying was untrue. They were saying it to placate Donald Trump. And two, it's now evidence against all of them, whether criminal or, or, or in a trial, but, but evidence that their words cause death and destruction. Yeah, that's the part that they can't walk away from. Uh, you, you can, you know, right. talk about unity and, and dance around a lot of a lot of, uh, you know, noise. But the reality of it is we listen to you for the run up uh, of this election. We listen to you on Election Day. We heard what you said after the election about it being stolen. So, yeah, the, you know, this is this is exhibit A uh, against all of them for for contributing to what happened on January 6th. You cannot walk that back. And so I think, you know, the, the smart political thing to do in the face of all of this, which we know they won't, is to say, my bad, we got that wrong. We were wrong about this. But yet, and still, they st they're still engaged in it. You still have this, this level of noise out here from some uh, that continue to perpetuate the lie. And so whether it's in the form of a Taylor Green and her and what she's saying and, and the fact that McConnell seems, you know, befuddled about how to deal with it um, or, or anyone else, it all feeds the continual narrative that the GOP has bought into what Donald Trump started out with about this election. They refuse to move off of it and they're going to ride and die with it. Uh, it's, it's it's still so staggering just just to hear you say it all out loud and, and put it that way. Claire McCaskill, I keep thinking that what with this reporting and this recreation of the timeline erases any doubt that the Republic and I hate to use this word in the gutter because it, it, it's, it's not nice to gutters, but they're in the toilet bowl with this muck, this dirty underbelly of American political society. And when you look at the where the investigations going and where the arrests are, they are arresting members of the Proud Boys. They are moving toward investigating and perhaps charging the conspiracy and, and perhaps um, more serious charges of sedition. So that real the people that were listening are the people that stormed the Capitol, raising Trump flags. It erases any doubt about where the conversation was was between. It was between Republicans and the president and white supremacists, Proud Boys on the other side who carried out the crime that they thought they were directed to carry out. Mitch McConnell made a cool calculation in the days after the election. Mm -hmm. He knew what Donald Trump was going to try to do. He knew it was wrong. He knew it was a lie. But he was trying to hold power in the Senate. Everything he did in those 77 days was all about, up until the Georgia runoff election, was all about winning those Senate seats in Georgia. He thought he was in a boxed canyon. And he thought if he placated Trump, Trump would do what they needed him to do to promote those candidates in Georgia and get them across the finish line. Of course, Trump didn't care ultimately about that. All he cared about was himself. So it was one of the right. few times you see Mitch McConnell make a very bold mistake when it came to a political calculation. If he just would have done the right thing, the outcome would not have been any different. But maybe he could have saved some lives in the process. They were all just looking yeah, the other way, hoping yeah. it would go away. Mm hmm. Yeah, Mike, that's some of the most stunning um, part of the, the new reporting is this window into what Claire just described quite accurately, Mitch McConnell's calculations and his staff trying to sort of hold the line on those two Senate, Senate runoffs. Um, that backfired spectacularly, and McConnell lost control of his caucus anyway. There was a notion amongst top Republicans and aides to the president and people who were working on his legal team that at some point— the president was going to give up and that he wasn't going to take this this far. Now, I find that a bit surprising because I think that if you looked at the president's pattern of behavior throughout his four years in office, to see that he would question an election to the ends of the earth was not surprising, at least to me. But that seems to have been a theme, that they thought that the norms were going to kick in. They thought that the president was going to act like a typical president who has lost an election. And that just never happened. And as we wrote in this piece, almost 8,000 words, anchored by our colleague, Jim Rutenberg, 
the events build on themselves from the middle of November mm. with the early allegations about Dominion, the specious claims about foreign interference in the voting systems and all the gobbledygook from Giuliani. They build and build and build on each other until that final chapter, that bookend being January 6th, the incident that happens at the Capitol as the election is being certified. And you see how the president cooked up these these doubts and feelings amongst his base. And the result being obviously this, you know, ugly, ugly insurrection. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.